camera am I looking at? Welcome back. We love our authors here at Park City Television, and we are fortunate that here in Utah, there are many who take their life experiences, pick up the pen, and share those experiences in poignant and memorable ways. This morning, we start our conversation in the emergency room, certainly a place, a, just a term, the ER, that has meaning to all of us, whether it's been personal experience or shared experience with those in our lives. And this author has penned a tome that comes from 25 years of experience in that setting. He has also won a Best in State Award for his book. It is entitled, Not Yet, and this is its author, Dr. Jeff O'Driscoll. Good morning, my man. How Good are morning. you? Nice Good to, to be see with you. you. Hey, we better. Can we start with the hardware? Sure. Yeah. Let's start with the hardware because, as I mentioned, when uh, when an Olympic athlete comes on, we don't waste any time showing the hardware. So there is, congratulations, a best in state award. Thank you. Do you, uh, is there, are there, is, does the best in state give you instructions about like honorarium where you're required to wear your medal or? They, they don't give you any instructions <laughs> on how to wear it. I just picked it up on Thursday at the banquet where they uh, awarded these and uh, so I guess I can wear it however I like. Yeah, absolutely. You are, you are the holder. So congratulations. Thank you. Very cool. Um, tell us a little bit about about your background, and I'm thinking specifically of where the physician meets the chronicler, because this is obviously uh, a takeaway of, of a, a unique combination of things, to spend the, the number of years that you have in service of others, but also to have this uh, motivation and this uh, inspiration to, to share not just the stories, but the meaning of your experiences. Well, the motivation and the inspiration came late. The uh, experiences came over a 20 to 25 year period, as you say, but uh, for 20 years, I didn't feel like I was at liberty to share them for some reason. Mm. And uh, it's only been in the last year that uh, I finally felt like it was okay to talk about these things publicly. And uh, just six months ago, I wrote and published this book. Uh, people have a lot of spiritual experience in the emergency department. Uh, a lot of people don't talk about them, but a lot of people have them. And almost whenever I speak to people about this, uh, their response is, you know, I had an experience once. Be, and they start flushing to share. them out. Yes. That's interesting. Very cool. And so a lot of time, I've had a lot of people tell me experiences that they've never shared before wow. uh, just because they f have found what they feel is a safe place to talk about it. So uh, being a, an, uh, a, f a former analyst, I kind of uh, made a matrix out of, out of this series of experiences and, and kind of ways of looking at things. And I really liked that, um, that you, the, you use life as much as you use the word death. And, uh, and as I alluded to this, the word shared and, and, you use the term shared death yeah, people, experiences. Most people are familiar with the notion of a near-death experience. I think it's an unfortunate misnomer mm. uh, because most of the people that have had those experiences and most of the physicians that have taken care of them would say that they were not near dead, they were dead. And wow. uh, furthermore, I've witnessed souls rise up out of their physical bodies at death and ascend to a more glorious place. And they're closer to some grand, eternal, glorious life than they ever were when they were in their mortal bodies. And so I coined the term and used the term near life experiences because I think when people have these spiritually transformative experiences, they're nearer to some eternal spiritual life than they've ever been before. And the people that come back from such experiences share a similar sentiment, that they felt more alive, more invigorated, more filled with light and knowledge than they ever did in their physical bodies. And the term shared death, one that's mm -hmm. kind of new to people, but gaining more prominence, refers to 
people who have a spiritually transformative experience, sometimes an out-of-body experience, not when they themselves are going through a crisis of medical health, but when they're near somebody that is. Mm -hmm. When they have a loved one die, for example, they may see their loved one uh, after death or have some other experience. They may be on the other side of the country and their loved one comes to them at the time of their death and tells them that they've moved on. And people can critique near-death experiences uh, and question uh, the legitimacy of them. But it's hard to question the physiology that causes a shared death experience because the person having it's usually alive and well and healthy. Wow, that's heavy. Talk, if you would, about your journey of, of doing a job that requires such intense concentration. You're literally holding people's lives in your hands. You're working in a, a heavy time restriction with, with other people who are in the same kind of vibe. And yet, a, a lot of what you're talking about in this book is a, a spiritual orientation that comes from having these kinds of experiences. So it imagines, or I imagine th that these are kind of polar opposites that when you're in the ER, when you're presented with someone who has a, a heavy trauma, and yet this book wouldn't exist if you weren't having the kinds of thoughts, reflections, and experiences that, that stem from that very same high pressure moment. Talk about how, how does that work? Does, this, does the spiritual reflection come later? Are there times when you're in the ER when, when you're feeling these kinds of, of experiences? It, it, it's a great question because it's been my experience and I write about it a few different times in the book where if I'm taking care of a patient and I'm trying to make those life and death decisions yes. and I'm responsible for directing the care and, uh, and the actions of multiple people on the team, I rarely have those spiritual experiences because I'm too consumed with the things of the, of, of the temporal nature. When I have more of my spiritual experiences when somebody else is taking care of the patient and I happen to walk into the room or I'm nearby and I have no responsibility for their care right. and hence I can be open to those spiritual experiences. That's been, that's been my personal experience. When we're so consumed with the things of this life, yeah. it, it, it crowds out the spiritual often. I think that's one reason that a lot of people don't have spiritual experiences at the time that a loved one dies is because they're filled with grief, which is such a powerful emotion. It keeps them from experiencing the spiritual. And uh, I know a lot of people that have had very spiritual experiences at the other end of life when people are born. I've witnessed those spiritual experiences at the birth of, uh, of a child, which I've witnessed many times. Mm -hmm. But most of the family members are so elated with the joy and the celebration of welcoming a new soul into their family, they're consumed with the earthly ex emotions and yes. experiences and they miss sometimes the spiritual because they can be mutually exclusive at times. Interesting. Tell us about the journey and, and as you mentioned, you weren't thinking about spiritual things or thinking about writing a book 10 or 15 years ago, it doesn't sound like. And yet here we sit with your recognition of, of what's contained between these covers of this book. Talk about how, how you made it to the place where you said, I, I have to sit down and write about this, not just reflect, but write. And also, and I think this a lot of then publishing, that's a big step too. Yeah. You could have a journal, you could do this privately, you could share in a, in a, a setting with a small group of people, but you've chosen to share all of this with the world by, by publishing this book. Talk about that journey to get to the point where you were ready to do that. About 20 years ago, uh, a man who later became my friend, his name's Jeff Olson, he actually wrote the foreword for the book, was involved in a car crash which uh, took the life of his wife and his 14-month-old son Griffin and nearly took his life, took his leg and uh, he was flown to my trauma center. Uh, he'd, had his near, he'd had one of his near-death experiences while his body was still being extricated from the vehicle. Wow. Uh, but when he arrived in, in my trauma center, 
other physicians were taking care of him. So it was one of those experiences where I walked into the trauma room and I had no responsibility for his care. He was unconscious on the other side of the room and I looked up and saw his deceased wife standing above him in the air uh, supervising or uh, observing his care and she communicated with me about how grateful she was for the care that was being provided. It was a month before I ever met or spoke with Jeff Olson when he was uh, conscious and able to speak and we've been friends for 20 years. Wow. He wrote about some of his experiences and spoke about them and he invited me to join him and I, I persistently declined for all those <laughs> years until about uh, last June. It's been just under a year now. I just had a sudden and inexplicable change of feelings like for some reason it was okay to talk about it now. Interesting. And so I, I, I wrote this book and when I was on my way to give my first talk about it in uh, Salem, Massachusetts, I was in the airport and a young couple sat down next to me and we started to converse and when they found out where I was going and what I was going to speak about, it was one of those experiences where she opened up and said, you know, my grandfather recently died and he's come to me a couple of times. Wow. And we had a, we had a nice conversation about yeah. it and she took one of my books with her and left and caught her plane and I shortly thereafter caught my plane. And on my flight to Boston, I had that voice that speaks to one's heart come into my mind and it said, you will help more people with this book than you helped as a physician wow. in the emergency department which made me feel glad that I wrote it. Isn't that lovely? That is, that, is, that is just beautiful. Doctor, if we could, let's take a break. I wanna continue our conversation. I wanna talk about it. Feels to me like where you go from here, it, this is just a barely starting point. And just I wanna talk about the future. Hey, you guys, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back with Dr. Jeff O'Driscoll. More on his book, Not Yet, after the break. Welcome back. We are discussing this award-winning book, Not Yet, stories from a life of experience in the emergency room. It's about real life. It's about spirituality, and it's about the journey that we are all on. I am here with its author, Dr. Jeff O'Driscoll. Welcome back. Welcome. It's good to be here. Yeah, thanks, thanks for coming. This is really cool. Before, I, I want to talk about the future, but I, I also want to ask one question that uh, I, I think is it, it's certainly salient here in in Utah, where um, where religiosity is a big part of of the life of this state. Certainly, the LDS Church, but uh, many many other faiths as well. Of course, are you a religious person, and how do you characterize your spirituality? Is it different based on the experiences that you write about here? Or are you essentially the same person that you feel as though these experiences have happened to you because you're an open person? I don't think of myself as a religious person. I think some of my friends and family would disagree, but uh, uh, I don't consider this a religious book. I consider this a spiritual book. I think religion can be a prickly thing. It can cause divisions among people. It can bring people together. It can galvanize for good or bad in some cases, but some people, and I'm one of them, who thinks that spirituality in a way transcends religion because it connects directly with source and uh, uh, enables people to come to a better life uh, without a lot of constrictions and restraints and arguments about what's right and wrong and good and bad. And so I don't think of myself or this book as being religious, but rather spiritual. Uh, I think my journey started when I was still quite young. Uh, my brother died in a farm accident uh, when we were young. He was a teenager. I was 11 at the time, and we were very close. Wow. Wow. And I think that may have opened something up for me that uh, allowed me to have some of these, these experiences later in my life. Yeah, that's fascinating and interesting how this, this conversation of, of spirituality, of uh, timelessness um, and and yet tragedy and loss is intermingled in there in a way that, that that makes these experiences so deep and so lasting. I think the loss and the pain is key to experiencing some of these things and I think frankly that loss and pain 
is the common thread in humanity that allows us to relate with one another. And when we accept the pain, when we accept the tragedy and the loss, we begin to learn empathy and we learn to be able to interact with other people better than we would otherwise. Uh, but if we're not willing to experience and accept that pain and process it, we cut ourselves off from many of these experiences, in my opinion. So, you have a book. You've written a book, you've published, you've made that decision to uh, hit send, as it were, to, to share this with the world, and, and it sounds like even just this recent award, but there's a, a velocity that's already starting to happen. What do you see, and I, and I love your comment about your realization that you'll help more people with this book than you did as an emergency room physician, which is a, a, a heady statement to make and exciting and beautiful, I think, as well. What does the future hold for you as a writer, as a physician, and as a storyteller? Well, I don't make any pretense in this book of trying to suggest to other people how they should live or what yes. they should do or what they should believe. Rather, I took the position of these are my experiences. These are a few of the lessons I've learned from them. If these are helpful to you, great. Uh, but you're under no obligation to accept what I say and I'm under no obligation to defend it. But it's been my experience, and from the many reviews I've started to accumulate on the book in its first few months, people love it. They feel validated by it. They want to share their own experiences as a consequence. I've had a number of people tell me that they want to live their lives differently after reading the book. Wow. Uh, one person very close to me, who I won't disclose who it is, came to me and uh, uh, has a, a history in the medical field and told me, I now realize that I've had many spiritual experiences and until I read your book, I didn't realize they were spiritual. Wow. And that's the way we go through life a lot. I think a lot of people have experiences that they kind of brush off or ignore or second guess. And when they look back, when somebody helps them to have a little bit of insight, they go, oh, that, that really was a spiritual was a experience. Thing. I had lunch with a friend of mine a few months ago and as we're having lunch, he suddenly starts telling me about a heart attack he'd had a couple of weeks before. And uh, he was laying on the floor, and his granddaughter heard him talking to Siri on his phone saying, Siri, what are the symptoms of a heart attack? And he finally ended up at the hospital, fortunately. There was no heroics. There was no out-of-body experience. There was no unconsciousness, but he got a couple stents. He went home from the hospital, and two weeks later, we're having lunch together. And I looked at him, and I said, did you have any experiences during that time? <laughs> and his, his whole countenance changed and he said, yes, yeah, matter of fact, I did. Wow. And his deceased wife had come and visited him while he was fully awake and conscious. And it's one of those experiences where he kind of had brushed it off, you know, it was a brief thing. And I said, don't, don't minimize that, that's real. And a lot of people have had those experiences and when they stop and pause and just recognize them for what they are, they can be life changing. People want spiritually transformative experiences. They're fascinated by near-death experiences. Most people would like to have one, but they prefer not to die to get it. Right, right. <laughs> so, so, so my book is about some of the experiences I've had and I've witnessed where people did not die, uh, where you can have this experience that gets you spiritually centered and gives you a framework to put things in context without having a medical crisis. A, a galvanizing moment, without yeah. a doubt. Uh, Jeff, tell folks where they can get a hold of the book. This book is on Amazon. Uh, it's online in Barnes & Noble. It's not in their brick and mortar stores, but it's in their online stores, and it's on Amazon. I'm on Facebook. Uh, you can reach out to me. I have a new website that I just launched. It's jeffodriscoll.com, and uh, they can see my books on there, I have other books. I published a novel last year as well. I published a series of six children's books which uh, delve into some of these life principles a little bit in a, in a easier way. Uh, some of my artworks on my website and Fantastic. Uh, uh, they can go there too. So great. Uh, thank you for being here and, and I have to tell you I, I feel like I'm, I, I'm seeing a, a, a ship launch 
onto a great journey, that there's so much to come from this, and, and that the, the fact that you've shared with people is, is very important. And well, I'm speaking to groups. Uh, I've, I've spoken to several groups now, and if people want to reach out to me on my website, or if they buy my book, my email address is in the front of the book, they can reach out to me. I'm, I'm available. Fantastic. So nice to see you. Nice Thank you here. for coming. Thank, Thank you, you for the work it took to put this together. And best wishes for a great success in helping many more people. Thank you. Thank you so much. Jeff O'Driscoll, the book is not yet. Make sure to add it to your summer reading list. It's the perfect time for poolside books to come onto your personal list. JeffO'Driscoll.com. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with lots more show the second hour after this. Stay tuned.